Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be giving you a more complex example of a compound and how to apply RS convention naming to it using the right hand rule and also priority rules. Okay, so here we have this example right here. Now, whenever you're trying to name this, uh, first of all, try to identify everything that comes along with it, right? Remember, carbon likes to have four bonds, right? So whenever you see an ME symbol, if you've never seen it before, it just stands for methyl. And a methyl group is a CH3 group bonded to whatever else. So this is actually going to be a carbon bonded to three hydrogens. So if you have ME, it's the same thing as carbon bonded to three hydrogens bonded to whatever else, okay? That's basically what it means. You, you use ME as pretty much a notational shorthand, all right? And that's what we use it for. Right, so now that we have this out of the way, you have another ME, another methyl group, another CH3 group present. Now, we have this carbon here, right? We have another carbon here. We have a carbon bonded to an iodine. Because you have the black wedge, iodine is pointing out of the boards towards you. Remember, carbon likes to have four bonds, and if there is a missing bond, and there is no formal, formal charge, no positive, negative signs, no lone pairs, anything weird like that, that comes later, if you don't have any of that, uh, you're going to have a carbon-hydrogen bond. But when you indicate stereochemistry, when you have already have a black wedge of the iodine pointing out, the hydrogen needs to be pointing in, all right? If the iodine is pointing out, the hydrogen has got to be pointing in. In this case, the fluorine is pointing in, so as a result, the hydrogen has to be pointing out, all right? Chlorine is pointing in. Hydrogen points out, iodine points out, so hydrogen, so iodine points out, so hydrogen, hydrogen points in, all right? So that's just how our compound looks like. So whenever you're naming something like this, you've got to, first of all, identify the longest continuous chain of carbon and name it, all right? So first of all, there, these are all just single bonds, no double bonds, no triple bonds. So we know it's something called an alkane. So first of all, how many uh, carbon chains do we have? We only have one continuous chain, luckily. It's nothing too complicated. So, but how many do we have? We have one carbon here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbons, it's an alkane. Therefore, the base name of this compound is gonna be octane, all right? Now, before I write that down, something else. In terms of substituents, whenever you're naming them, you don't include hydrogen in the name. You don't say uh, hydrogen octane. You don't say that because hydrogen is so common, it doesn't really matter in the name. What does matter is I, iodo, F, fluoro, C, chloro. Um, how do you mention that? Well, the way you mention it is that um, you go in the proper alphabetical order, A to Z. So because C is the so because C comes before S comes before F and F comes before I, chloro is going to be the first substituent that's going to be mentioned, right? Followed by fluoro, followed by iodo in terms of the naming. One final rule when you're naming these compounds: the first substituent has to have the lowest number. So in this case, chloro chlorine is going to be the first substituent because C is the earliest letter of the alphabet in this case when you're naming. So what side do we start from? Do we start from, the, from this side or this side? Well, when we start from this side, we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when we start from this side, chlorine is actually going to be bonded to the fifth carbon. What about when we start from this side? When we start from this side, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. When you start from this side, chlorine is going to be bonded to the fourth carbon. 4 is less than 5. In this case, 4 is better than 5. And because chlorine is bonded to the 4th carbon in this side, and because chlorine is bonded to the 5th carbon in this side, we're going to go with this side. Because starting from this side gives chlorine um, the lower numbering. Okay? So hopefully that kind of made some sense. Now, now comes the name. So we have 1, 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, carbon 6, carbon 7, and finally carbon number 8. All right, so how does this naming begin? Remember, it starts with chlorine. So you're going to have 4 chloro 
After chlorine comes fluorine. Three fluoro. There are two iodines. The carbon's number two and seven. So you have two, seven, diiodo. The prefix di has nothing to do with the uh, with the naming, with the alphabetical naming, with the alphabetical ordering. Prefixes, ti, uh, di, tri, tetra, they have nothing to do with it. All right? Di iodo, you have eight carbons, so it's, and they're all single bonds. This is an alkane, so it's going to be octane. All right? And before learning about chiral centers and RS convention, you would have been, I'm done. I don't have to worry about naming this thing anymore. But unfortunately, actually, it's a good thing we're not done yet because it gets a little bit more interesting. Now that we have all this dealt with, we're going to deal with RS convention. In order to uh, deal with this convention, first of all, we've got to identify the chiral centers of this. Is this carbon going to be a chiral center? No, because it's a carbon bonded to three hydrogens. What about this one? One substituent, two substi second substituent, third substituent, four substituent. They're all different. Chiral center. This one, the same thing. Chiral. Chiral, right? Because it's bonded to four different substituents, four different substituents. What about this carbon here? This is one substituent. This entire thing here is another substituent. There are two different substituents. But remember, uh, in the shorthand notational drawing for this, if there's any missing bonds present, it's normally a carbon hydrogen bond. So we're having one carbon hydrogen bond here, one carbon hydrogen bond there, because carbon likes to have four bonds. Well, these are two equivalent hydrogen bonds. There are two there there are those two substituents are the same. As a result, this carbon would not be a chiral center. It would be an a chiral center. Same thing for this one. We're missing two carbon hydrogen bonds. This is also a chiral. This has three carbon hydrogen bonds, also a chiral. What about this one right here? Well, it's bonded to an iodine, it's bonded to a hydrogen, it's bonded to all this, and it's bonded to all this. Four different substituents, four, four uh, single bonds. This is also going to be a center that's chiral. So we have one, two, three, four chiral centers. So therefore, we've got to get, we've got to get, we've got to get four chiral centers the name of either R or S. And we do that using the priority rules. All right, so we've got a name. I'm going to be using the blue marker for this one to not confuse you with the numbering of the carbons. So remember, hydrogen has the lowest priority because it's got the atomic number of one. Iodine, uh, it's, got a, it's got the highest atomic number in this case of 53. It has the priority number one. This has priority number four. And for this one, you look at the point of first difference. This is a carbon bonded to a carbon, carbon bonded to a carbon. But this carbon here is, is bonded to three hydrogens, while this carbon is bonded to a fluorine, it's bonded to another carbon, it's bonded to a hydrogen. What's going to be higher, a higher priority? A carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens, or a carbon that's bonded to a hydrogen, a fluorine, and another carbon. Which, is more, which has more priority? This one. So as a result, this carbon here, uh, this, all this has priority number two, and this has priority number three. So put your thumb in the direction of the lowest priority substituent. It's going to be hydrogen in this case. Put your fingers in the direction of, it can be any substituent, but we're going to go with number one. We're going to go with iodine. Curl your fingers. It goes from one to two to three. You curl it like that. Fingers pointing, thumb is pointing in, in the direction of hydrogen because hydrogen is going into the board, away from you, the viewer, and you curl your fingers in the proper direction of your right hand, goes from one to two to three. So as a result, this chiral center would be called R. What about this one? Fluorine, well, first of all, this is carbon attached to carbon, carbon bonded to carbon. We're going to deal with point of first difference stuff later. For now, we know this has priority number one because it's fluorine. This, uh, which has the highest atomic number between fluorine, hydrogen, and carbon. Next, uh, we're going to have hydrogen. It's going to have the lowest atomic number of one. Therefore, it's going to have the lowest priority number of four. That's uh, how, it, how the numbering works. And now we're going to deal with this. Which one's two? Which one's three? This is a carbon that's bonded to carbon. 
carbon bonded to carbon, look at point of first difference. It's a carbon bonded to carbon. Now this carbon is bonded to iodine. This carbon is bonded to chlorine. Iodine has a higher atomic numbers than chlorine. Therefore, iodine has a higher priority than chlorine. So, this, so as a result, this would be 2. This would be 3 because the carbon here, at the point of first difference, you're gonna, it's going to be iodine versus chlorine. Iodine has a higher atomic number than chlorine. Therefore, iodine has a, a higher priority than chlorine. So this is 2, this is 3. In this case, hydrogen is pointing out. So you, put your, uh, so you stick your thumb of your right hand out towards you, the viewer, out of the board. You put your fingers, and you can put it in the direction of two, in the, uh, 2 or 3 in this case. It doesn't matter. When you curl your fingers, it goes from 3 to 2 to 1. It doesn't go in the right order. It goes backwards, in fact. So as a result, because it doesn't go in the proper order, 1, 2, 3, this chiral center is going to be S. All right? What about this one? Well, chlorine is number one, hydrogen is number four. Which one's two, which one's three? This is a carbon bonded to carbon, bond, carbon bonded to carbon. All right? Point of first difference, always. Carbon is bonded to this carbon, but this carbon here is bonded to two hydrogens, while this carbon is bonded to hydrogen and fluorine. Point of first difference, ding, 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 fluorine. Fluorine has a higher atomic number, and therefore it has a higher priority than a uh, fluorine has a higher priority than uh, hydrogen. And as a result, this substituent is going to be number two, and this substituent is going to be number three for this carbon. Okay, because here it's a carbon with two hydrogens. Here is it's a carbon with a fluorine and a hydrogen. At the point of first difference, because of the fluorine, this substituent has a higher priority. Okay, so. Hydrogen's pointing out, so you stick your thumb out of the board uh, towards you, the viewer. You can put your fingers in the direction of one and curl. It goes one, so forget about this for now. We're looking at one, two, three, four. It goes one to two to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Goes in the proper direction, in the right direction. Therefore, this chiral center is R. Okay? R. One final chiral center, this one right here. Carbon, iodine, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, 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 carbon. So what's it going to be? Now in this case, iodine has the highest, uh, in terms of the atoms that are bonded directly to the chiral center, it's going to be iodine that has the highest priority, right? Because it's got the atomic number of 53, highest priority one. Hydrogen has the lowest atomic number, so hydrogen is going to have the lowest priority of 4. So which one is 2, which one is 3? Point of first difference. Here, it's going to be a carbon bonded to carbon, carbon car bonded to carbon. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little bit interesting. Because it, this carbon is bonded to a methyl group. I'm just going to draw it here. CH3. This carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. This is a carbon bonded to two hydrogens. You might be thinking three hydrogens versus two hydrogens, this one wins. Not exactly. Because after this, it continues. This carbon is bonded to another carbon, which is bonded to another carbon with chlorine, which is bonded to another carbon with fluorine. So in other words, because this carbon is attached to a lot more mumbo jumbo, to a lot more stuff than this carbon, which is only bonded to three measly teeny weeny hydrogens, this uh, this substituent actually has more priority because, um, to just put it in simple terms, it's bonded to a lot more stuff. This carbon just ends with hydrogen, that's it. But this one keeps going on and on and on and on to other carbons, other hydrogens, other fluorines, um, other iodines, other chlorines. It's going to have more priority, okay? So that's something else to keep in mind. So put your finger, so hydrogen's pointing into the board. Curl your fingers, you can curl it in the direction of two. It goes from two to three seems to be in the right direction. You can actually curl it starting at 1. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Code points in the right direction. This chiral center is R. So how do you finish the name? This is how you do it. Before all this, that's when the chirality comes into play. So the way you do it, you don't have to do it 4, 3, 2, 7. 
um, or whatever the chiral centers are. In this case, the chiral centers, when you're naming R and S, you put it in parentheses before the name. You can just do it in correct order. So the first chiral center we've encountered is 2. So we're going to do 2R, comma, followed by 4S, followed by, no, 2R, 3S, followed by 4R, then finally 7R, okay? 4 chloro, 3 fluoro, 2 7 diiodo octane. And you just do it in correct order 2, 3, 4, 7. You don't have to start with 3 first. You don't have to start with 4 first because 4 was the correct um, ordering for the IUPAC naming. That doesn't matter. When you're dealing just with RS, you can do 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the correct um, numbering order is. So we did 2, 3, 4, 7, 2R, 3S, 4R, 7R and then the rest of this name. And that's just a more complex example. Hopefully this video helped and thank you for